Hi folks, welcome, welcome. Yeah, this is just a clip just to share with you a glaze, a glaze recipe, which is basically either a clear glaze, no, correction, a milky white glaze or a celadon glaze for raw glazing. This is the recipe, just show it to you quickly. Um, yeah, flint, four pounds. I put in green there, I don't know if it's going to come out, the amount in ounces, four pounds or 64 ounces. Uh, kaolin, two pounds, 12 ounces or 44 ounces. Feldspar, that's Custer Feldspar, three pounds, 14 ounces or 62 ounces. Whiting, one pound, 14 ounces or 30 ounces. Talc, one pound, two ounces or 18 ounces. Bentonite, two ounces. And if you want to make it a celadon glaze, then you want to add, add in red there, as I've written, red iron oxide, four ounces for celadon, okay? So that's, that's the recipe, which I have already mixed up in this bucket and, and added the water to. I'm now about to sieve it. Okay, so join me for that. So, um, to sieve this, to make sieving a little easier, I've come up with this method I've shared with you before, where I put this is my old bucket of celadon here, into which I'm going to add this fresh, okay? So I'm just putting that onto the, onto the, my, my, my electric wheel. And what I'm going to do is just center it up, the bucket, you see. Like that. Then we're going to take the sieve. Okay, sieve. An 80 mesh sieve is, is sufficient, okay, 80 mesh sieve, that's going around nicely, so what we'll do is, I'll just give this a good stir, I just added the dry ingredients into here, and now what we're going to do is just add this into here. Like that. Make sure we're, uh, we're in the picture there. And then what I simply do is, with it going around, I just hold, maybe we'll have it going a smidgen faster, a bit faster. Be very careful if you adjust the speed when you've got the bucket on the wheel, because you can... As you can hear the... I do find that having one of these with bristles is rather good. Combining with one of these. So this glaze I have I have tested out on raw wear and I found it to work. Now you need to apply this glaze to, to dry, dry raw wear, okay? Not leather hard. You appreciate if you add it, if you put this onto a leather hard piece, it'll sit there on the surface and dry, but then the pot underneath, the leather hard clay, will continue to shrink 
and what happens is the clay then is left high and dry on the surface. You see? So if you apply it to the dry, to the dry pot, let's say, whatever your pot is, and I think that the best way of doing this is to uh, apply the glaze, apply the glaze to the inside of the pot first, okay? And I think you've seen me doing this. You add, you, you, you pour it in and then wipe off around the rim. Wipe it back because what you're going to do is you're going to come back later when it's dried off a bit and dip the outside of the pot. So you don't really want to get a double thickness around the rim of your pot. I hope that's clear. In fact, recently in a video, let me just get this to show you. In one of my recent videos, I showed you I was dipping these guys, okay? I've still got to finish dipping these. But what I did was I dipped the, just on the inside, and you saw me wiping off with a sponge, you see? So these are now ready to be dipped again. Uh, in the same milky white glaze, which is the same glaze as this, minus the red iron oxide, so it's just white. I'm going to dip these again. So you need to think about doing your glazing, you see, in two stages, inside and then outside. Yeah, so... You see, with the, with the sieve going around like this, you'll find that you can push this, push this glaze through the, through the sieve quite easily. I do encourage you all to make up your own glazes. Don't buy store-bought glazes. It's a very expensive way of going about your pottery. And it means you never really have enough of the glaze and you can never properly dip the pot in the glaze because you've got so little of it because it's cost you so much money. <laughs> so if you make up your own glaze like this, it's far, far cheaper, really cheap. Um, and it's just like, it's just like cooking, you know, following a recipe, measuring, weighing the ingredients and just and then, and then um, adding them into the bucket, dry first, then you give them a dry mix and then add some water. Or you could actually add them into the water itself. In other words, first put the water, a certain amount of water in a bucket and add the dry ingredients to the water. It, it probably mixes a bit better if you do it that way. Yeah, so this this is actually this is my normal my normal glaze, but the only way I've modified it is to add about two percent bentonite, which just helps with the the way that the it, the glaze adheres to the clay of the pot. Basically, what it does is it helps the shrinkage the, the shrinkage rate. It makes it shrink a bit more. So it tends to fit the pot, you see, a bit better. That's basically all I've done to this glaze to change it from a regular 
glaze, Sullivan glaze for a bisque firing, for bisque glazing, let's say, to a once fire raw glaze just by adding 2% bentonite. So you should be able to take that recipe, and that recipe is good for cone 10, okay? Cone 10, not cone 6, cone 10, and give it a whirl, you know, give it a shot, have a go. Do a bit of, make some pots and then, I think we're going to make this wheel go around a smidgen faster. Just be a bit careful when we adjust the foot pedal on this because these electric wheels, they can suddenly run away with you, can't they? Make sure it's properly on centre before you do this, otherwise you could have a, a nasty mess <laughs> all over the floor, all over your wheel, everywhere. Beautiful day out there today, my goodness. Not a cloud in the sky. And here we are, 4th of October, 2017. And it feels like summer. So I'm just easing this, easing the the glaze through the screen. Using my wheel to assist me like this, very simply. I never used to like mixing up glazes much, I don't know about you, and uh, certainly to be able to To do it like this is so now I'm just about Whoop. so what I'm going to do is use my <laughs> Just using this rubbery kitchen spatula thingy to um, get the rest of this out of there. Okay. There is that. Oh, wait, I'm going to need that, aren't we? And then the. Just a little bit more to do here. It does just help the help the glaze just to go through a bit quicker, I think, rather than just doing it manually. Give me your feedback. Ask me what you, tell me what you think. So a bucket of glaze like this, instead of costing me for the amount of glaze I got in here if I would had that ready made up and bought it like that we'd be talking about probably tens or twenties of dollars it's probably cost me maybe three dollars or something to, 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 to make it up you know very cheap all you've got to do is just a little bit of labour 
All right. A little bit of labor, a labor, but a labor of love, huh? Un labor de amor. There we go. There we go. Yes, so. Stop the wheel. Um, and, um, that is now all sieved. It'll just need to be. What we'll need to do is adjust the thickness of the glaze for for use. I would say it, we could add add just a little bit of water to that, but not much, not much. That's a thing. Also, make sure when you make up a glaze that you don't. Um, in the process of making it up, you don't add too much water and wash it all through, you see. And then what happens, uh, if you think you're going to go then and do some glazing, you'll find that it's too watery, you see. So, have, as I did have here, ready a, a, jug, a jug of water to sometimes to help the material go through the screen a little easier. But in this case, we didn't really need it, did we? All right. Okay, folks, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that was of some help for, to you. Give me some feedback uh, if you thought that was useful. And join us here for a workshop. <laughs> a workshop, visit my, my Etsy shop if you want tools or... There are some pots up there. If you want a more detailed list of pots that I have for sale, which I don't always have up on Etsy, then just write to me and say, Simon, please send me your up-to-date list listing of pots for sale. And I will, of course, willingly do that for you. Okay? Thanks a lot. Keep practicing. I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.